Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it is going to be Power Stone for the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, we're actually playing the Japanese version today and there's a, a few different differences here between this and the North American one. Uh, one of the characters' names was changed for the North American release. There's also Japanese text all over the place and Japanese voice acting uh, for the story section. So just a heads up on that. Uh, if you're here for the story, you're probably not going to really get it unless you really understand Japanese. Um, but yeah, this is an awesome game. This was a launch title in North America. It was an arcade game in 1999 for the Naomi uh, hardware system, which was basically what the Dreamcast was based on, and it got a quick port to the Dreamcast, and it is such a fun game. Uh, it was really unique at the time. You didn't see these uh, types of arena fighters really much back then, and uh, it was really just in a league of its own. For one, visually speaking, uh, it was just super impressive in 1999. Uh, 60 frames a second all the way through and just, you know, beautiful animation and popping colors and stuff like that. And the gameplay was just really something to behold. It was just really uh, fun. And it still is a ton of fun today. Uh, Power Stone is a game I think that has aged quite gracefully, actually. Uh, you know, obviously low-res visuals aside, um, you know, it could definitely use an HD remaster. But aside from that, I mean, I think it's still, the colors still pop, uh, the frame rate is still fluid as, as anything, and it's just, it's awesome. So much fun to play. So yeah, we're going to be trying to run through the uh, arcade mode today, and um, it's tough. I'm not the best Power Stone player. I have been practicing it these last couple of days, uh, but the last two boss fights in this game do give me some trouble. And depending on what characters we fight at what part during the day or during the game or what portion during the game, um, you know, the AI can be kind of a pain depending on, like if you fight characters early, it seems like they're easier. And if you fight those same characters later in the game, they're, they're harder. Very typical of our arcade difficulty um, scaling, especially in, you know, brawlers or fighting games. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I might have to continue a couple of times. We'll see. Hopefully I can do a one credit clear. I might not, but if I do, then then great. I wasn't planning on it. Um, so yeah, before I jump into things as usual, guys, as usual, I'd like to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers over on Patreon. Thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, your support keeps me motivated to do this as frequently as I am. And uh, for everyone else, no worries. I hope you guys continue to enjoy the content, and thank you for watching. Um, also, I'm going to shout out the Super Chatters from my live streams. I do live streams every Thursday night. Uh, so if you're around, feel free to stop by and say hello. Uh, so we're going to basically be playing this on the default difficulty setting. That's how I usually like to do these Let's Plays. Uh, I don't like to lower the difficulty down unless the game is just stupid hard. But you know me, I like stupid hard. So I li also like the default difficulty modes as a result. Um, Alright, so uh, you got a bunch of different characters to pick from and just like, you know, typical arcade games and fighting games, you do have a timer so if you sit here for too long, it'll automatically select the character for you. But you can see how it's got quite the uh, cast of characters. Great uh, personality in this game and great character designs. But we're gonna go ahead and pick Mr. Falcon here as he's known in North America. Uh, his name was changed for that release, I'm guessing because of his original name sounding like a specific curse word over here. Um, so yeah, uh, Power Stone, it's 360 degree movement, uh, you know, you can fully interact with uh, the arenas, uh, you've got objects thrown all throughout, like these blocks and whatnot, you get near them and press certain buttons, you will do certain things to them, usually push them across the arena. Um, and here we've got three power stones. Uh, the power, the, this is how you really, you know, dominate this game is you get your three power stones. Um, pressing uh, punch for Falcon here does a homing attack. Doing R does your special, which uses up your entire meter. And it does that awesome um, dash attack in the air. Uh, pressing the B button allows you to pick up objects, and look at that, I got three power stones again. Um, the game just doesn't even want me to explain it, it just wants me to get the power stones over and over. Alright, so that's one one round down. Um, it's best two out of three, just like in fighting games. So if you're familiar with fighting games, it's it's got a similar setup, you know, you've got uh, your health bars and uh, it's best two out of three. Uh, what's also kind of cool is that the emblem that it, um, it shows up on the top left under your name 
um, you know, it just like a something that was done in the uh, the Capcom CPS2 fighters, like the Street Fighter Alpha series. Uh, it tells you if you beat the opponent normally, or if you beat the opponent because time ran out. Um, there might even be one where, uh, you know, it's a tie or something like that. So that's kind of interesting. That was something I noticed last night playing this game. I never really picked up before. Um, so yeah, Power Stone, you've got jumping. You can double jump, I think, with pretty much any character. Um, you can uh, grab onto um, these and pick them up when you're in your Power Stone form. Bam, just like that. Uh, so like I said, the environments are pretty, pretty interactive for the time. I mean, back when this came out, there wasn't really anything quite like this before. I mean, you had kind of like arena-style games like this, but they just, you know, didn't quite do it like Power Stone does it. But yeah, basically the attacks work, uh, you just, X is punch, uh, Y is kick, and then the B button is, uh, grappling or, uh, you know, grabbing on the objects and just picking them up and then throwing them. So if you get in front of an object and then just press punch or kick, you'll just kick it across the screen. But if you get in front of that object and press the B button, you will pick it up like this, and then you can throw it like so. Those bombs are pretty dangerous, actually. They're very, very powerful if you can make them connect with an enemy, but they are very dangerous. That's a mallet right there, way too slow for my taste, and this right here is a bazooka. Uh, also too slow for my taste, but the pistol, I like the pistol. When I pick up the pistol, I walk slow, but usually it kind of like locks in the enemies and uh, it works pretty well. Uh, one of my favorite moves is uh, doing a jump kick. So just jumping into the air and then pressing the, uh, the Y button. It's sort of like a, not really a homing uh, jump kick, but it does track the enemy and you'll dive right into him. Uh, unfortunately, he's using his, uh, he's got the three power stones, uh, the... <laughs> he who controls the power stones controls the flow of the match, and that is an extremely important feature in this game. Um, this might actually kill me. Nope, it didn't kill me. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my, uh, super with the R trigger. Each character has two supers or specials. Ooh, nice, it killed him too. You notice my health bar was almost depleted, so that was actually close. I really don't want to get a game over if at all possible, so we'll see what happens. Uh, every round, you, each character starts with the Power Stone, so... Um, it's good to try to knock the, you know, the Power Stone out of the character. And then the third one always appears shortly after. And one strategy I use with Falcon here is to use his uh, Kick Attack, which does this, you know, upward spiral tornado type attack and it does a good amount of damage and then before my meter runs out I do my special which that's not gonna hit um, now a lot of times when I play I like to stay away from the enemies because uh, especially with the AI I find that they can be very aggressive and I'll be trying to punch them, and uh, they'll just end up overriding my attacks. Now, if you can get like a three-hit combo off with your punches or your kicks, it's it's very powerful. It does a lot of damage. Chances are you'll take almost an entire block of health away, um, which is very good. But especially later on in the game, um, the last two enemies you have to fight are basically boss enemies. And, uh, they are very dangerous to be nearby, so what I like to do is just try to rely on my Power Stones towards the end of the game in particular. Um, relying on your Power Stones in the beginning part of the game is good as well, just to ensure your, your survival. And some stages like this are quite cluttered with objects, which can make, uh, you know, dealing with your opponents a little bit tricky. Alright, so here's a Power Stone, and let's see if I can knock the next one out of him. Oops. Okay, we need to knock one more out of him. That's gonna do it, and let's pick that up. There we go. And back to my tornado strategy. Now, as characters, you can you can actually roll along the ground after you've been knocked down. Let's go ahead and use our homing missiles. 
The homing missiles work a lot better if you're at a, at a, at a distance. And so that's one of the fun things about the game is figuring out, um, you know, the best situations and times to use your uh, special attacks. And any attack in general. Uh, not every attack is good in every situation. Like that jump kick is better when you're up close than it is when you're far away. And there it is, one round down. We're uh, about five minutes into the game right now. Bam, see, that jump kick is really good up close. Back to the Power Stone mode. Now you gotta watch out, if you take damage when you're in your, you know, your Power Stone mode, uh, you do lose your meter. So notice how my, my Power Stone meter got depleted in the bottom left hand portion of the screen. It got depleted really fast. Oh, here it is again. Now, if I wanted to, I could stay back from a distance and use some, uh, homing missiles, but unfortunately, they don't really seem to, to work all that well for me. Oh, he's got a flamethrower. The flamethrower is my favorite, uh, weapon that you can use in the game. It is a fantastic weapon. It does rapid damage, uh, and, uh, it'll knock multiple power stones out of a character if they have them. So it's okay if an enemy picks up a power stone, but you really want to knock it out of them as fast as possible. Uh, because if you don't, there's a the good chance they're going to get three, and when they get three, the AI is just extremely dangerous in this game. Yeah, you can see, like, just the, the quality of the visuals. This, As of recording this, this game is almost 20 years old now. And um, just imagine going from, like, the Sony PS1 or even Nintendo 64 and then going to this with all, like, the shifting, uh, you know, cutout images and stuff like that and just the smooth transitions from stage to stage and, and the frame rate, 60 frames a second. It was just really mind-blowing back then. This is why people were so hyped about the Dreamcast launch, at least in North America. Um, it, it was... It was a massive jump in, you know, just qu the quality of video gaming um, that we hadn't seen in quite a long time. And it was, it was one of the last big jumps that we'll really ever see. Um, I mean, there's always a decent jump from generation to generation, but that impact it makes on you is just really dependent on how far everything kind of comes at once, and this is one of the last times I think we will really ever see something, uh, we'll see such a large jump uh, that really just wows pretty much everyone across the board. If you weren't, uh, you know, impressed by the Dreamcast when it came out, you probably weren't paying much attention. And, uh, you know, games like Power Stone just really showed that off. And this was like the norm for the Dreamcast back then. This is why the Dreamcast uh, was such a special console. Um, this wasn't like a rarity. This was this was uh, more so the norm than anything else. It was really a fantastic time to be a gamer. Um, and the Dreamcast was one of the last consoles that got frequent arcade ports, and not just frequent arcade ports, but arcade ports were common. Um, you know, the PS2 got some arcade ports as well, but it still wasn't as common in that generation, at least not in North America. You know, in Japan, they were still getting their shmup releases and stuff like that, which was cool. Uh, us folks in North America had to import a system and import those games, uh, which was not cheap. Um, but the Dreamcast was, you know, especially in North America, uh, one of the last consoles that really got frequent arcade releases, and arcade releases that were billed as big budget AAA titles. Maybe not big budget AAA titles, because that term back then wasn't really used or tossed around as much as it is now. Um, but it was a time when you could release an arcade game or arcade port to console and treat it like it was a big deal. Nowadays, you, you really you really don't see that. Even if you do get an arcade port or a game that throws homage to a real arcade game, um, uh, it doesn't really get much hype or much praise for that matter. So yeah, the Dreamcast was just, man, talk about a time to be alive for gaming. It was really, really something to behold. And it was thanks to uh, games like Power Stone. 
Power Stone did have a sequel. Uh, it was also an arcade game uh, for the Naomi system, and it was ported to Dreamcast, you know, about a year, a year and a half after this one. And um, it actually incorporates four-player gameplay, so this is just one-on-one -on -one all the way through. Um, and Power Stone 2 incorporates larger arenas, and arenas that will have auto-scrolling sections with events, kind of similar to certain levels in Smash Brothers or something like that. Um, so, really cool stuff. Um, highly recommend checking that out if you can. Unfortunately, it's super expensive, so if you want to play it on an actual Dreamcast, either you're going to have to, uh, you know, figure out how to make backups on your system, or get something like the GDMU where you can um, basically install a uh, SD drive or USB stick or something and just install ISOs to that. Alright, so I need to knock this last Power Stone out of this guy. This guy could be a, a major pain. He's very, very fast. And his arena, one of the things that's tough about this is his arena is just extremely cluttered. And it makes it difficult to, to you know, walk around and dodge things. He's constantly throwing stuff at you. I really want to jump kick him. Yeah, I actually had trouble with this guy last night when I was playing this. Bam. Bomb to the face. And you gotta watch out, you don't want to be right under enemies, because they will, uh... They'll basically just, uh... They'll do their, uh, their grapple attack in the air, which puts you straight down. And you'll basically head stomp the enemy. I want this, this is the flamethrower. Oh crap, he's gonna get the power stone. I was doing a little bit of button mashing there, I was getting desperate. You can see how crazy this character is, man, Wing Tang. He's very annoying to fight. And I'm having a hell of a time trying to get the Power Stone out of him. This is exactly what happened last night. He's just... He's a pain to deal with. Alright, that's good. Good, man. He's just He just jumps all over the place. There's so many chairs and tables littered, littered all over the place. It, you know, he's constantly chucking projectiles at you as a result. Alright, so we got the Power Stone. Now I need to wait for the third one to appear. Where is it? It's gonna be over here. There. Nice. You can see how this game can get intense, too. Even just against the AI. And, you know, we're on the default difficulty mode, too, so I haven't tried cranking the difficulty all the way up, so I'm... I'm pretty curious to know what it's like. Alright, we're gonna use our special here. Bam. Perfect. You can see I got a, a green P emblem for the perfect, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, Power Stone 2 is a really awesome game. Unfortunately, it's super expensive. Um, the first Power Stone, if you're interested in buying uh, an original copy, it's also going up in price in North America. You're looking at 40 or 50 bucks for a copy in North America. Um, but what I always tell people, and this goes for Dreamcast and Saturn, and even PS1, depending on the game, and if you have, you know, an imported system or a mod chip system for PS1. Um, you could buy the Japanese versions of these games. Um, in the case of Power Stone, the Japanese one is about half the price of the North American one, so... Uh, I paid like 20 or 25 for my copy of the Japanese one, and it's not the kind of game that... Um, I really care much about the story or anything like that, so, you know, having the story be in Japanese and the text be in Japanese really isn't a big deal to me. Uh, it's the gameplay that matters in Power Stone. And, uh, so, if you just want to play these games, if you're still a collector or you're one of those that's just very adamant about playing, um, with original discs and, uh, not using ISOs or burned media or something like that, um, then get the Japanese version of the game. Uh, it's gonna cost you less. A lot less, actually. Um, Power Stone 2 is kind of the same way. Japanese one will cost you less, but it's still not cheap. I think it's probably over a hundred bucks for even the Japanese copy now. The US one's even more expensive. It's really quite dumb, actually. Um, so that's a game, if you really have to play it on physical media, um, there was a uh, Power Stone collection released for PSP, which includes both the first game and the second game. And what's actually really cool about the second game is apparently originally there were characters omitted for Part 2. Um, but they were added back in for the PSP version. And then characters that were only in Part 2... Um, 
were added back in for part one on the PSP release. It seems really, really cool. I, I actually really want to check it out now, now that I've been playing a lot of the first one again. Uh, so if you guys ever see a Let's Play of Power Stone 2, uh, it's possible it'll be through the PSP version, because uh, at this moment I don't have a way of really playing the uh, part two on Dreamcast originally. Uh, the original on Dreamcast, I mean. So I need to really take control of this match because uh, he's already got a win. Let's see if we can get one more of these off. There we go. Use our special. Bam. Does so much damage. Let me go for those power stones. Where are they? They're over here. Now the AI will always go for the power stones. It's very rare that they don't. I just use the gun against him. Got him. Awesome. Now the jump kick is not a very powerful attack. You'll notice that it only does a tiny bit of damage. And the damage scaling works kind of in an interesting way in this game. Not only damage scaling, but the damage system works in a very interesting way. If you don't hit an opponent hard enough, um, basically what happens is that part of their health will remain blue. And the part that remains blue um, can be uh, regenerated. So doing jump kicks and things like that will oftentimes leave uh, that health area blue where you hit them with the jump kick. I'm just trying to knock the power stones out of him because if he knocks one out of me, he's going to... Uh, he's going to transform. Bam. Got it. This is a very fast game. It's it, You can get overwhelmed very quickly against this AI. Alright, let's go ahead and use our homing missiles. Bam. Yeah, the homing missiles are good if you're all the way across the, the screen. And he's gonna transform. Crap. Alright, let's get away. Okay, there we go. One more. Got it. Whew, this is putting me on edge, man. It's in it gets intense. And time ran out. Good, I win by, de by default. So the timer can both be your, your friend or your foe in this game, especially at, and on the last two bosses, where, you know, they're very resilient to taking damage, so, you know, they take less damage when you punch them and kick them and stuff like that. You have to really rely on your power stones at this point. And so we're at Kraken. He's basically the first uh, boss. And uh, you really want to stay away from this guy. This is where you don't really want to try to do melee attacks. Um, you really just want to try to knock those power stones out, like so. And even then, he can knock you out of your jump kick, depending. He's going to go for the power stone. I'm going to knock it out of him, just like that. Awesome. Good stuff. Alright, so let me get up close and just try to rely on my tornado attack. You notice that anchor uh, moving back and forth. Uh, they can actually get hit by that. And I want to try to stay away from it. And I kind of want to just leave him just like stuck in there. So let's go ahead and use our homing projectiles. Oh! Wow, I just got a perfect on him. That was awesome. That was awesome. I was not expecting to do that. But that was actually really nice getting him trapped in there. That was actually really good. All right, so where's the third one going to appear? There it is. Oh, I didn't use my super in time. It's okay, we got the flamethrower. Flamethrower is my favorite. Uh, normal weapon that you can use in this game. It is just amazing. The AI has a very difficult time trying to avoid it. And even in, when I'm in my Power Stone mode, um, I will use the Flamethrower, because when you're using normal weapons, even in this mode, 
uh, you'll find that uh, your Power Stone meter doesn't really deplete that much unless you're actually using your normal Power Stone moves. Or your special Power Stone moves, I should say. Should say. Alright, let's get that knocked out of him. Wow, this is actually looking really good. Usually, it, it'll take me a couple tries on this guy. Bam, we got it. Wow, we just ran right through him. Now, this next guy could give us some serious trouble. And we're at 16 minutes right now. And the last time I played through this, it took me like 40 minutes to, to beat the game. Because we got stuck on this guy, so... Uh, this guy, you just want to stay as far away from him as you can, and then just do jump kicks to knock the Power Stones out of him, and just get the Power Stones. That's it. So this is Valgus. Not exactly the nicest looking fellow. And then after this, we basically go to a uh, transformed version of Valgus, which is actually a one-round fight, and that's it. So the biggest problem with this guy is getting up close and getting grappled. You don't want to get grappled by him. Uh, he does significant damage. He'll take about two full bars away from your health. And then uh, if he gets above you, he'll do this uh, sort of like body slam, belly flop kind of thing. And it just does serious damage. Let's see if any of these hit him. Nice. And I got the flamethrower too. Power Stone again, that's good. So, when these guys fall down to the ground, I'm watching where they're trying to go as well. I'm constantly trying to track where they're rolling. Um, so I can use my uh, Tornado Attack. Okay. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good at all. Crap. This actually could be good. Bam. Yeah, so when he does that purple laser attack, you want to jump over it and keep moving, but move into him, because when it when he comes out of that, that's his special, so you know his power stone mode is going to end. And then you can get a quick 1-2-3 combo off on him afterwards. So that was actually really good that he did that. Alright, so I need to knock this one out of him. Bam. The strategy to knock the power stones out of him quickly is to get close into a jump kick. Do not jump kick from uh, a long range against this guy. You will probably miss, and he will probably retaliate with either some kind of grapple or his belly flop, and two full bars of health will be taken away from you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use this one. I find this one works really well from a distance. Oh, that's not good. Bam. See, look at that. It's, it's a bar and a half. It's not two bars, but it's still not ideal. Great. Now this is not good. So his green projectiles right there are very tough to avoid. Sometimes he'll use his... We're dead. Oof. Sometimes he'll use his super uh, after using just two of those green projectiles. Oh, he still hit me. Those are pretty useless weapons, too, like the pipe and the sword and things like that. They're very slow, so I'm actually surprised that he hit me. I should have jumped. That was my fault. I really should have jumped. And look at how much health he takes away just from throwing one object at me. Like I said, against this guy, you have to rely on the Power Stones. If you don't, you're probably going to die. Alright, let's get away and do our homing attack. Nice. Oh, my God. 
Alright, we got it now. I think it's in the bag. Nice! First try! I think that might actually be the first time I, I beat him on the first try. So that is awesome. This next fight's not gonna be too much of a tr of, you know, a trouble or a problem. Uh, we might still die. Uh, cause it is easy to die on this guy, but, um, you know, when you continue, you can just, you just continue right back at the, the final form. You don't have to fight this form of Valgus over again. Whew. That was actually pretty awesome. This is actually the first time I got to the final boss without continuing. So you need to jump over his laser here. And the big thing is he's got this, uh, these sort of like homing ice spikes, and what, he, what I like to do is try to bait him into doing his laser there. If you could do that... These are what I'm talking about. So what I like to do is use my homing missile, and then use my supercharge with the right trigger. Bam, just like that. There's definitely a strategy to this guy. But it's good to try to, bam, bait him into his, uh... Doing his laser like that. Now these things are tough to avoid from a distance. Go ahead and do your laser. Do your laser. Or smack me Dark Souls style. There we go, we got it. Wow, one credit clear on Power Stone. I was not planning on doing that. I was expecting to have to continue. But yeah, Power Stone is definitely the kind of game you gotta have a strategy. You gotta gotta have a game plan. But it's it's not it's not like it's impossible. It is it, it can be tough though. But that's what's really satisfying about playing this game is that it is a challenge, but it's totally doable uh, if you learn the game a little bit and have a game plan on how you attack certain situations. So there you have it guys, Power Stone on the Dreamcast. And here's the ending for Falcon. Like I said, Japanese version, so completely in Japanese. And there you have it. This is basically the credit roll. Credits roll. So, uh, yeah, fantastic game. I, I love playing this game. And I'm actually glad I picked up a copy of this again. Um, you know, it's definitely one of my go to games on the Dreamcast. Uh, you know, I was really blown away by this game when it came out, and, you know, uh, there's, when you, when you go back and you play games that you haven't played in a while, you know, obviously you've got that nostalgia angle to deal with, um, and the Dreamcast is very nostalgic, uh, for me personally, because of just, like I said, it was a very special time in gaming, um, thanks to games like this, and, you know, and the frame rates, and the popping colors, and just the great overall detail on the, the polygons, and it was just really, uh, the gameplay, it was just really an, an amazing time, but Power Stone, I think, you know, setting all that stuff aside, I think it still has aged quite well. Um, a lot of the things that made it really impressive back then, I think, have helped it to age well. You know, like the really smooth frame rate, the awesome controls, the uh, bright, vibrant colors, um, you know, the clever use of, uh, tile tra transitions and stuff like that, image transitions, you know, how, like, all those little cutouts, like, fade on top of the, you know, the screen, and then they cut away, and then you've got a different screen. Stuff like that is just really, uh, really good design, and it, uh, like I said, I think it's allowed this game to, uh, have aged quite well, 
Um, the game is super fun to play. Uh, I can only imagine what this would look like with an HD remaster of some sort, or or even just a HD port. Uh, it could really be something awesome. And imagine Power Stone Online on PlayStation Network or Xbox Live. Um, yeah, that would really be something. That would be some awesome stuff. And Power Stone 2 Online. Um, Capcom, if you're if you're listening, get on that. So, uh, but all right, guys, that is pretty much it. Um, that is the let's play. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, there is a uh, yeah. Here, hold on a second. Let's go ahead and hit start real quick and go back to. Um, so even if you're playing the Japanese one, you'll notice on the bottom right hand portion of the, of the screen there, there's a little icon that actually tells you what it is. So this is arcade mode. This is option. This would be versus mode if I had another controller plugged in. Uh, a lot of Dreamcast games do that actually. Um, they won't actually recognize, uh, we won't allow you to go into a multiplayer game without having a controller plugged in. So this is option, extra option, save and load, um, Power Stone Collection. So if we go to the Power Stone Collection here, it's uh you know shows a few things you've unlocked and whatnot uh you can also go here and watch uh your endings and things like that so if you go all the way to the very end here so you can see there's uh cut scenes and whatnot so let's go ahead and go back again and then we'll go up to uh extra option so there's uh other things you can set here as well i this is all japanese but i'm gonna guess this is rounds uh you know so I guess probably five out of seven instead of, uh, you know, two out of three. No, no, it's probably three out of five instead of two out of three. Uh, I don't know. Um, and then you've got, this is probably like damage scaling and things like that, handicap settings and whatnot. I have no idea what these these are, but, um, but if you're playing the North American one, you'll know exactly what they are. So yeah, you've got extra options and stuff like that. And, um, and your standard options as, as we've already been to. So that's gonna do it for me guys. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. Um, I'm gonna try to do another Dreamcast Let's Play very soon, if not next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I don't know how many other Dreamcast Let's Plays I will be getting to because uh, uh, even the games that are really good for let the Let's Play format, like arcade games, extremely difficult uh so you know you're probably not going to see a whole lot of dreamcast let's plays in the near future um but i am going to try to do some dreamcast live streams because there are some games that are a little bit longer like record of lotus war or gauntlet legends you know games like that uh will work really well for the live stream format so expect some dreamcast live streams in the near future as well um i'd love to get more dreamcast content on this channel but you know, we'll see how that goes. I know I have a couple of other games here, probably fighting games that I could probably do, um, which would be easy. And if I can get my hands on some of those schmops again, I'd love to do some Giga Wing and Giga Wing 2 and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take it easy.